Hi and welcome to the sixth video in the marketing strategy course and today we are talking about how to get your prospects attention so we'll do a very quick recap we've decided what our objective is what is the point of our marketing what are we actually setting out to do that's our strategic objective okay and then looking at how we're going to do that we've looked at the the circuit which is the model for the concept that we are taking to market and that helps us to analyze the five key elements of how we are going to interact with that market at a high level and then we can analyze whether all those elements are present and correct and powerful and distinct right and then in addition to that once we know that we've got f uh, five green lights we can look at those elements and say well how can we increase those how can we upgrade them boost them to get something that's even more powerful and effective to take to market then in uh, the last video we looked at different kinds of ways in which we can actually reach out and find our ideal audience and there's two ways two general approaches one is to target them directly that means that we are going out to find them and the other way is with outreach and that's more of a slow and a passive method but that's putting our message out there in a way that lets them find us both methods are absolutely valid both methods can be extremely effective all of this comes down to what is the shape of your business your campaign right and so it's all down to what is the truth some of the stuff you've chosen some of the stuff that is a given right but every campaign is different so all that we can do is say t what taking the facts as they are what looks like the right most appropriate kind of fit for what we actually want to achieve so next what we're going to do is just plan what happens next okay so when we find these people or when they find us what's going to happen what do we want the experience to be so we've used the metaphor of the a path right they are somewhere on the path and somewhere in terms of their progression of experience using the awareness ladder right do do they even know they've got a problem um do they know what their problem is do they know of solutions to their problem do they know about your competition do they know about you are they convinced of the benefits to them maybe they're almost ready to buy lots of different points along the path that they could be our job is to go and meet them on that path to stand with them and then to walk with them along the rest of the journey that they need to take now fortunately what we've done is we've mapped out the steps that you need to take to get from where they are to where you want them to be okay and that's the awareness ladder and the detailed awareness ladder that we've been looking at so what we have to do is we have to plan our campaign needs to include an element for each of those steps that needs to take place if you miss steps out that's like you know missing out a section of a bridge right but you know because we've mapped these out you can and you should decide have a plan for what you're going to do for each of those steps and then you know that you've got all the bases covered and of course the first thing that we need to do when we meet them on that road is to get their attention so that's going to be the focus of today's presentation now i do want you to bear in mind what kind of person we are today we are more familiar and more aware and conscious of marketing and advertising than we've ever been we are we do experience we are subject to more advertising and marketing messages than ever before that's a, that's pretty obvious and we are as a whole more sophisticated we know we are being marketed to and you know we partake in that process of being marketed to um, quite consciously a lot of the time and we actually use marketing we rely on marketing we rely on brands to help us to know what is out there we actually enjoy it in a way um, and at the same time that level of awareness can make us somewhat cynical 
Okay, so yes, there are naive buyers. Yes, there are a lot of dumb people in the world, right? We shouldn't pretend that everyone is, you know, highly intelligent because that's not the case. Um, but, you know, don't assume that people don't know they're being marketed to. All right, so just bear that in mind as we go. So, various factors to consider when we are trying to judge the appropriate first message, that first experience that somebody has of your brand. And we've got already, you know, one, hopefully several channels in mind of how they might find us or how we may find them. But what are they going to experience? So the first thing, obviously, is the awareness level. What do they know about their problem, alternative solutions, or our solution as well? Okay, that's the first thing. You need to think about and be honest about their likely mode that they're in or mood. And different channels will likely, uh, f you'll find people in different modes on different channels. So a lot of people spend a lot of time on Facebook. When you're on Facebook, most of the time you're in play mode. You're in life mode, your you're life outside of work mode. Put it that way. Right. If people are searching for specific technical things to do with their work, then you might find those people through AdWords, pay-per-click, right, or other channels. If you go to a trade show, you're going to find people who are open and receptive to, you know, the new tech and new happenings in the market. So just be aware of the mode or mood that you want people to be in. And then think, well, how am I going to find those right people in that right frame of mind? Think about the time and the space that you need to get the message across that you need to get across as well. Because a, a tweet has 140 characters. A, a pay-per-click ad can be a bit more, right? But a video ad can... Uh, convey a lot more information but then you've got advertorials and, and print ads and, and all, all kinds of different methods so you know really need to think about um, how much do you need them to to know in order to be ready to take the first step at all and so what's the you know uh, the most appropriate kind of methods for that and then also think what is going to get their attention. So we're going to look at all these four factors in turn, starting with the awareness level. Every awareness level has a natural and logical next step. Okay, so if somebody is at step one, say for example, and they have a problem, like they have a headache, and you say to them, 50% off our product, okay? Your product deals with headaches, okay? But if they don't know that your product deals with headaches, or they don't know why your product is better than the one they've got in their drawer already, they don't care if there's 50% off, right? Giving somebody a discount on something is only appropriate when they know what the thing is how it's going to solve their problem, and whether it's any better at solving their problem than anything else. Otherwise, what's 50% what's off something I don't care about? Right? And bear in mind, you're, you know, always be thinking, your prospects who are out there don't care about you, they don't care about your product. Very often, they don't even really care about what your product does. They don't. They don't care about you. Right? What they care about is one thing. What's it going to do for me? Okay. So every awareness step has a natural and logical next step. And it's our job when we meet somebody to say, look, this is next. Then that, then that, then that. Right? So we'll work through the first few steps. Okay, step zero. They're not aware of a problem. So step one, they become aware of the problem. But they are not aware that solutions exist. Step two, they are now aware that there are options for addressing that problem. And then at step three, they become aware of your 
solution. So each of those steps, there's a natural logical next step. Uh, step four, they're aware of the benefits of your solution. Okay. Now, if they're at step zero, and they are not actually consciously aware of the problem, right? Yeah, they may have backache, they may be worried about the bills, but they're not thinking about it right now. What you have to do is say, hey, do you have this problem? What's that like, right? That's the only thing you can do at that point. If you start saying, you know, hey, look at the, um, here's a comparison of the performance of different things for that problem, they'll go, What's that got to do with me? Is it absolutely, you know, nothing to do with, with my life right now, okay? You've got to make them aware of the problem. That's the only job that you've got at that point, right? As soon as you've done that, they are now at step one, once they're aware of their problem. And when they're at step one, what, what happens, okay? So they're at step one, they're aware of the problem, they're not aware of any solutions. What you have to do at that point is to let them know this problem is solvable. You can do something about this. Okay, that's it. You can do something about this problem. Then they know that the problem is solvable, right? They may be aware of other solutions or they're aware of solutions in general. The only thing you have to do at that point is to show them, explain to them what is wrong or what is missing or inadequate with the other options that they've got out there, right? There's a gap, there's something missing. And then what we do is we fulfill that gap with our product. When we've told them about our product, the only thing we need to do is to explain why our product is better than those other pro uh, products at solving your particular problem, right? Then they're at step four, they're aware of the benefits. And then what we need to do is to say, why don't you act now? We need to give them a reason why they should act at all, but specifically act now, because the only time that people can ever act is right now, in the present. Okay, we'll talk about that later. So here's a handful of adverts. This is the, the old classic, you know, do you make these mistakes in English? Classic print ad looks very, very old fashioned now. But this is the archetypal step zero ad. Someone's at step zero, they are merrily carrying on their day, going about their business, not thinking that they are embarrassing themselves because of the mistakes they make in English. And then they're confronted with this ad. It says, do you make these mistakes in English? Suddenly, it's making you think, oh, maybe I do. Right, and you're becoming you you moving then from step zero to step one. Get rid of back pain. I think is a step one type of situation. The reason why is yes, we are all aware that there are painkillers and there are things that can be done. Um, so you're either at step one or step two, <clears throat> but really, you're you're maybe not aware. <coughs> Excuse me that there is anything that can actually get rid of your back pain, right? Once and for all, you may be able to manage it or whatever, but if you're typing in get rid of back pain, that's like, I'm aware of my problem, clearly, but how do I do it, right? And then we've got various ads. So we've got struggling with back pain, have chronic back pain. Um, and then you've got one that says Solbidine Max Soluble Tablets help get back to you fast, which is, Although yeah, they're bidding for the number one spot, it's not as relevant as the one that says chronic back pain or struggling with back pain. So I think that the uh, ads at positions two and three there will be likely to get more clicks. Because right? this is a step one or step two situation. Um, Solpidine Max Soluble Tablets is saying that's kind of a step three, four. It's like they're already aware of your, of your product. So I think that's a little bit premature. And you lose money when you, you know, when you when you're throwing money at the wrong step market. Then you know if you get clicks for that, you could be throwing that money away. Best gift for women is clearly a step two market, right? Reason why I know what I want. I need to get my woman, friend, partner, wife, whatever, a gift, and um, I know there are lots of gifts out there. Clearly, 
So I'm at step two already, but I'm not aware of your particular gift, right? So I'm at step two there. And then we've got ads saying the best unusual gifts for her. And it's, it's good when these pay-per-click ads use the same language as what I've just typed in, right? So it's using best gift and for her, which is great. And it's adding unusual. So, uh, and also a little bit of fear in this one, a little bit of watch out, don't get her a boring gift, which I quite like. And then the one below, gift ideas for women, is a bit vague. But if you're in the gift ideas market, then maybe that's okay. Alternative to ClickBank. This is definitely another step to add. All right? And you'll find that most ads are step zero, one or two. All right? You rarely advertise for people, at people who already know about your product because they already know. So alternative to ClickBank, alternative to, um, you know, better than, uh, can be quite a, a powerful way. And it's, it's a good little cheat as well to get into, um, borrow somebody else's terms in order to get into their market. So alternative to ClickBank alike. And they've literally got number one ClickBank alternative, right? Digital download sales service. Um, what they're not saying here, which I think they should be, because right, right, people are at step two, okay? They know that there are solutions. They know about ClickBank. They're not sure if ClickBank's the right one for them. Um, all this ad is doing is it's saying that we've got an alternative to ClickBank. It's saying it's number one, but how credible is that, right? Why? Why is it the number one? Sell downloads on the leading download selling platform? Right, okay, leading is a so overused and such a poor word, but right, we're not here to do a copywriting class, but you know, it's all relevant. Yeah, I don't think that's particularly good ad. So the second thing, so we know what awareness step they're at, so we know what our job is, what we have to do first when they get, when, when we meet them on the path, okay? So what mood or mode are they in right now? Are they specifically looking for a solution to a particular problem, right? If so, great. And what we need to do is we need to offer them the solution to that particular problem, or are they just browsing? Um, people don't browse so much on the web as much as they used to uh, 20 years ago, but we browse a lot on social media. So we're just in the mood for, you know, entertain me, inform me what's going on in the world. So different channels have got different natural modes. Okay. Now, if you've got somebody who is solution, uh, solution hunting, they're actually out there looking for something specific, then they're likely to be quite a hot prospect. What you'll find is that you'll get more competition and you'll have to pay more for those kinds of markets. All right. So, um, let me give you a really interesting case study at this point. I've got a friend, Ian Dooley, uh, in Australia, very, very good marketer uh, and pay-per-click expert. And um, Ian and I went through, he, he uh, did a, an AdWords course with me a year or two ago. And he gave this, this example, which I think was brilliant. Because he was going for private landlords, okay? And what he found was, that I, I can't remember what the specific product was that he was trying to sell or promote to these private land. I think it was some kind of software package. And no one, no, absolutely no, none of these private landlords, zero, none of them were looking for software to help them do, manage their private lettings, okay? Dead market, no, no one there. Why? Because they're all at step zero. It's not a problem. I do this with my book and I tick off when I get the rent or whatever it is. And, you know, I'm not aware of any problem. Okay. They are all at step zero. They, they've got no problem. So what you need to do <clears throat> is you've got to, when you've got a market at step zero, you've got to reach out to those people and you've got to tell them what their problem is. You've got to say, hey, you're missing out here. You could be doing this so much more effectively. You could be saving money, saving time, etc. They're not sitting there thinking, I'm wasting money, wasting time. Okay? So you've got to reach out to them. Now, we've said before, 
you can't reach people who are at step zero with pay-per-click because they're not typing in my problem or here, you know, here's the solution I'm looking for into the search engines. Unless you're Ian. So this is what Ian did. It was brilliant thinking. He, he thought of it, thought at, he approached the problem from a completely new angle and said, okay, right, they're not looking for what we're selling. But what are they looking for? What is this same group of people, these private landlords, what are they looking for? And he discovered that there was a particular kind of um, rental agreement that they all had to use in Australia, right? And one of the pains that all of these guys had was, you know, drawing up that particular document. So what they decided to do with him and the, uh, the, the maker of the software was create a free template to solve that problem, right? Are you with me? And then they marketed that through pay-per-click and you could do SEO as well. And so what they had was people, site, lots of people were typing in template for this particular document. They, and there's no competition because there's no money in it. So what they did was they they solved a different problem for these guys. They typed it in, clicked on the thing, go through to the page, put in your email address, and we'll send you the free template. And you know, within five minutes, you can make your document. Great. They all click on it. They all put their email address in. Then you've got your market. They've got a mailing list of private landlords because only private landlords would ever need that document. Okay? Absolute genius. Marketing genius, Ian Dooley. Is your market in work mode or are they in play mode? Right? Are they, is it LinkedIn? Is it, you know, Dig? Is it Facebook, Twitter, whatever it may be? And remember that there are different kinds of receptive for different kinds of things, right? When you're in play mode, you are more receptive to certain types of things and less receptive to certain other types of things. When you're in work mode, right, you're less receptive to kitten videos. I haven't got time for kitten videos now, but you're more receptive to things that are going to make your life easier, make you look better at work. Okay? So all of this is, again, all about just being honest and saying, okay, these people, where are they? What kind of mood are they in? And so that will then give you, it'll sketch out for you the shape of what you have to do. Always assume this is really key. Always assume that the prospect you're talking to is a future customer, right? If you've got a spectrum of where people are in terms of how likely they are to buy, the people who are never gonna buy, forget those people. The people who are gonna buy anyway, you can forget about, because they're gonna buy anyway. So the ones in the middle, the undecideds, um, treat everybody as though they're that. Even if they're never going to buy from you, it doesn't matter. They're never going to buy from you, it doesn't matter. They're never going to buy from you anyway. Right? Treat everybody as though they are open to buying from you. What that does is it puts you in a position and makes you do what you have to do to convince that person. Okay. So whatever mood or mode they're in, always assume that they are going to be a customer if you do a good enough job at explaining why they should. The third factor is how much time or space is available in this particular channel that you're using or how much time and space do you need in order to get that first message across. So how much do you actually have to achieve in the first communication? How much information needs to be transferred? Here's an example. So AdWords ads. You've got one line, these are the, you know, the, the new format, one line of headline <coughs> and one to three lines of kind of subhead. So we'll have a quick look at, at these ads. Um, so somebody's typing in a specific problem, size nine shoes for women. Um, they're step one, step two, right? surprisingly big market actually in, in the UK particularly I know because my wife is in this market and really struggles to find size 9 shoes so quick look size 9 women's shoes 
Shoes in sizes 7 to 13, okay. You see what the issue is, first issue is here? I've typed in size 9 shoes, means, you know, I'm a woman with size 9 feet. I don't care about sizes 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, and 13, right? So you don't need to put that. Size 9 women's shoes. So you say, yes, we've got size 9 women's shoes. That's great, right? Now I'm at step 3, I'm aware of your brand. Your, your job now isn't to sell me size 7 shoes or size 13 shoes, right? Your job now is to say why your shoes are more appropriate than anyone else's shoes, okay? Um, so first ad, not fantastic. Stylish range of large shoe sizes, okay? Stylish is good. Stylish is adding something to the thing. It's saying this is, you know, our shoes, they may be big, but, you know, you're not going to look like a clown because they're stylish. Then walk this way for the latest footwear. Mm. Okay, next one. Women's size 9 shoes at ASOS. Next day, delivery available. Hey, there you go. Right there in the headline, there's an advantage, a benefit to clicking that one rather than the other one. Right? They may get more clicks. Next one says free standard delivery. So, you know, it's all about what step are they are now. Uh, uh, are they at now? What do they need to know next? Okay, so limited space with this type of ad. Um, so useful if somebody's looking for something specific. You can say, yes, we've got that. Ours are great. Click on this. All right? This is a step zero ad or maybe a step one ad. Okay? And so this is clearly a, uh, an advertorial so a page in a magazine that's actually an ad and designed to look more like editorial. It says, snack your way to slim. We're not going to go through all the copy. That's not important. But um, just think, you know, this is, this is relevant. And they've got several paragraphs here to say, okay, you're, you're at step zero or you're at step one. You're kind of thinking, you know, I'm a bit... I've got carrying a bit of extra weight. What this is saying, hey, you know, you can lose that weight and still snack. Okay. In fact, you can snack your way to slim, which is slightly dubious, but so you can snack on this stuff and it's not going to make you fat. It's got some evidence in there, some social proof, visual images that are appealing. Right. So the point is here. If you need particularly for step zero, and when you have to go out and find people. So, you know, a magazine is a great way to go out and find people. Right? You, you have to take your message to them. Sometimes, if you need that much space to get your message across, take out an ad with that much space. Because, you know, a pay-per-click ad on Google is not likely to get you anywhere. And the fourth step, what is likely to get their attention. <clears throat> the thing that gets people's attention is the scent of something they want. People will keep taking steps forward if they believe that they're going to get what they want by moving forward. When you think that you are more likely to get what you want by doing something else than moving forward, you're gonna stop moving forward. Wrote about this in Save the Pixel back in 2008. I'm going to keep saying it for as long as it's true, which is always, okay? To get someone's attention, show them what they want. It's the dangle the carrot. If they want a carrot, dangle a carrot. Simple as that. Now, the message that gives you the scent of something you want needs to be relevant to you, obviously needs to be appealing, needs to be credible, and it needs to be appropriate. And we'll go through these, and we're going to look at now um, a few different kinds of first messages that people can get. And we're going to say, is it relevant, is it appealing, is it credible, and is it appropriate? Okay. So, this is one that I got off Facebook uh, the other day. More than 8 million people from Fortune 500s to small businesses already use MailChimp. 
Send better email. Find out why they chose MailChimp. Sign up for a free account and start sending today. I think this is an appalling ad, personally. The There's a, a huge image there that is showing me a graphical logo that will be meaningless to me unless I already know who MailChimp is. All right? So there's a huge amount of space there used to tell me absolutely nothing new. Massive missed opportunity. So, you know, what what step market is this aimed at? Right? It's the the only sign of a problem that I can see here is I'm not sending better enough email. Yeah? So send better email. Find out why they chose MailChimp. Well, why don't you tell me why they chose MailChimp now? Right? Am I, do I really want to click on learn more in order to find out why 8 million other people chose MailChimp? It's a really, really lazy and clumsy ad. Sign up for a free account and start sending today. What? Well, like, I'm already sending email. It, it lacks the reason why I should learn more. There's, it's, just, it's just missing. Right. Here's another one, also off Facebook ad. Got sperm, question mark, right? You got my attention. They've also got an attractive woman on there. I know, you know, everyone likes to look at attractive women. Men and women both like to look at attractive women. Uh, it's a fact of life. But got sperm, sperm shape, question mark, interesting. Get cash, appealing. Earn up to $1,200 a month, appealing. By helping people create families, okay. Get paid to donate? Really? Interesting. Cryobank needs donors in your area. That's relevant to me. Okay. Well, it's not particularly, but if you're a college graduate, you can make up to $1,200 a month by donating and help others fulfill their dreams of starting a etc. etc. All right. You can see the difference. One ad knows who it's speaking to, knows what those people want, and it's, it's relevant. It's... Right, relevant, yes. Appealing, yes. Is it credible? Of course. And is it appropriate? Sure. Good ad. Here's another one. Billion dollar US Army Superman study reveals how men over 40 are regaining the masculinity of their glory days. Is it relevant? Okay. Now, I'm assuming that this is going to be pitched at men over 40 which Facebook will very easily let you do. Um, is it appealing? Okay, so, is there sight of the problem? Okay, uh, yeah, <laughs> regaining the masculine. So I'm assuming this is to do with erectile dysfunction or something, some kind of sexual performance thing. And I love the way that it, it's not saying, you know, regaining the performance of their youth, regaining the masculinity of their glory days. And that's kind of evocative. And this, this ad is, this headline is actually doing a lot in relatively few words. Now, so appealing, absolutely. It's like, well, you're going to give me my virility back? Great. And I am a man over 40. Um, is it credible? Interestingly, it's backed up with not just a scientific study. It's a Superman study, Right. So what does that mean? Superman. So it's kind of intriguing. Now you need to be careful with intrigue and and those kinds of you know curiosity because um, stretch it too far and people just you know don't care. The BS alert goes off and you think, oh, Superman study. That's just enough kind of intrigue. That's a sprinkling seasoning of intrigue. But it's a U.S. Army study, and what's more, it's a billion dollar U.S. Army study has revealed. Wow. There's, this is really interesting. <coughs> so it's relevant, it's appropriate, it's appealing, and it's credible because it's backed up by the US Army. Uh, here's another one. Naked Wines. Did you know that there's less than 40p worth of wine in a typical £5 supermarket bottle? You've been buying wine wrong this whole time. Here's why. This is just an, another angle. So we're assuming that this is picked pitched at people who say, I like wine, which Facebook will let you do. This is a Facebook ad. Um, 
again, it's going at kind of the intrigue angle. And, you know, what this is doing is it's trying to divert people off their default course of action. So if you're trying to persuade people to invest more, I'm, I'm sorry to keep bringing up wine analogies, it's not deliberate. You're trying to persuade people to spend more on wine and spend that with you. So you're actually building the credibility for your, your brand by saying, hey, you know, if you, you know, spend five pounds a bottle on wine, you're getting crappy wine compared to 10 pounds, and here's why, All right, so building it up. Um, so where's this market? This market is not thinking about their problem. It's actually step zero. Step zero because these people are carrying merrily along their way, right? Buying five pound bottles of wine and drinking it down thinking, you know, this is okay. There's no problem. There's no issue. There's nothing wrong with this picture. So what you have to do is go in there and interrupt. That's what the ad's doing. There's less than 40p worth of wine in a five pound bottle. Really? You've been buying wine wrong this whole time. Here's why. Now, what's interesting here is there's quite a lot of information in a relatively small space on the ad. And it's even got a graphic that shows you how much has been spent or what the value is of the wine in different bottles at different um, prices. So I think this is pretty effective. Good ad. I'm going to go over this again because it's extremely important. I want you to get out of the mindset of funnels and to be thinking pipes, pipes, pipes instead of funnels, okay? What's wrong with funnels? I will tell you what's wrong with the concept of funnels. Now, people have been talking about sales funnels for decades, right? A hundred years, people have been thinking about sales funnels, okay? And the reason we've been talking about sales funnels for a long time is because in the old days, you only had really broadcast media. We didn't have the ability to customize letters that went through people's mailboxes. Everyone had to get pretty much the same letter. If you were very advanced in the early 20th century, you'd do a split test, right? It's really slow and really expensive. Print ads were expensive and everyone pretty much saw the same ad. Radio, TV, billboard, all of these media were broadcast. You know, you have pretty much one design for your message and everyone got that design. So what that means is that everybody got the same and then you had to filter the people out from that point. So, you know, here are the people who responded and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it, you know, goes down and down and down. And at each stage in the process that uh, some people would fall off, there'd be an attrition. And then however many you got out the bottom was the sales that you made. Hence the funnel design. It's a useful metaphor in that world. Today, we have very, very different media. We can target Facebook ads uh, men over 40 who like Doctor Who, right? But don't like so-and-so. We can target pay-per-click ads at people who say, I've got a pain in my left knee. You can target down to, what, and, and, and who live in a particular town. It's so, so fine and so accurate the way that you can actually target people now that it's a world, literally a world apart from the world that gave us funnels. So it's old fashioned. The funnel thinking is reductionist, not holistic. And what I mean by that is it's, it takes a numerical approach. It reduces the marketing experience down to, okay, how many people came to our website this month? Right? How many people visited the product page? How many people filled in the form? Right? How many people requested the demo, etc., etc. So it's, at each level, you've got a broad group that contains everybody, right? Everyone, the whole you know cadre of people who happen to do that thing in that particular time, um, and then from one level down to the next level, you've got a conversion rate or attrition rate. One's the opposite of the other, and it. 
it makes you kind of break down these steps, assuming that, you know, step one to step two is meaningful. Step two to step three is meaningful. And it makes you look at those, these individual components, these individual steps along the journey, um, as though that means something in itself. Right, well, I'll explain more about that. And it's also built on this expectation of inefficiency that you will always lose people from one step to the next. And that's probably true in most cases. But it's almost like the, the idea of a funnel, having a funnel in your head is almost like planning for that. So it encourages you to think, okay, broad, let's just, let's trawl the swamp, let's trawl the river, okay, and bring up all this stuff and then we'll you know, sift through the stuff to find the stuff we want. And I don't think we have to be so inefficient today. And the funnel thing, like I say, encourages this kind of short-sighted, myopic micro-analysis of looking, you know, too close at the conversion rate of this particular form or this particular email or whatever, and you can miss the big picture by doing that. Now, if you are only concerned about getting the maximum number of clicks from that particular ad through to that particular page, you're gonna put up something completely stupid like this. How to get free money online fast, okay? Free money, free beer, you know, free girls, free boys, whatever it is, people will click on that stuff, but that's not the point. Right, if you, you, can, you can get loads of people to click on your ad, costing you an absolute fortune, and then when they get to the next page, if that doesn't deliver exactly what they want, they're going to go away again, because they're going to lose the, the trail, they're going to lose the scent, and you've lost your money. So, you know, that's the problem. It's just one extreme example, but that's, that's, that's the problem with treating it like a funnel. Say, okay, how many people can we get in the top? right? It's not about how many people you can get in the top. It's about how can we get the people who are going to buy in the top. So it's a pipe. It's not a funnel. So that's a funnel on the left, right? Breaks down, breaks down, breaks down, breaks down, and some people drop out the bottom. Instead, we can go pipe, 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 pipe. Multiple pipes. Distinct, accurate, relevant, credible messages that speaking to me directly, speaking directly to my problem that make me believe you understand me. It's like, you know, I'm looking for pain in my left knee in this town. It's like, wow, an ad's come up for here's what causes pain in the left knee and how to get rid of it. I'm clicking on that, right? I'm in the exact right target market. So it's multiple pipes, like straws, right? Not one giant big ass funnel where all the garbage goes in the top and you have to grind and grind and grind in the hope that something's gonna drip out the bottom. Okay, that's important. This is super important. What's super important? Well, every message that you send out is a proposition in itself. What that means is that the message, it can actually have its own circuit. You can use the circuit, those five elements, in a 20 second analysis, a really, really short circuit, okay? So I will generally do this before I send out an email, right? It should be in your email, it should be in every ad that you do, every message that goes out, every touch point that people have can have a circuit, right? Who is the brand? Is that brand being expressed appropriately in this message, right? Um, what is the product or the service that we're talking about? Or, you know, what's the idea? Basically, what am I selling? What are you going to get from this? What's the, prop the proposition? What promise am I making in this? What problem am I solving in this? And who am I speaking to? Okay, every single message, including those little ads, the Facebook ads, pay-per-click ads, anything you do, think of it in terms of your overall circuit for your overall business, right? So you have an overall proposition. <clears throat> and you have a problem space that you address and you have your whole market, right? So you have a big kind of gestalt uh, circuit and each message can have its own specific thread within that circuit as well. And have a next desired action, right? This is 
the next step really beyond getting people's attention, but there's no point getting people's attention unless you're going to do something with it. Right? So you don't just run into a room and go, everyone look at me, and everyone turns around, and you don't do anything. Right? You've got to have something for them to do. So that was super important. This is super mega important. Whatever channel or method you use to reach out to your market, that first message, you could say any message, that you send out to people must do one thing. Now, if you remember nothing else about marketing, this one phrase will help you no end. Okay, Whatever you do, whatever method you use, that message needs to do this. Give them a reason to do the next thing. That's it. Right? Everything else feeds into this. A headline, <clears throat> a headline's job, a headline has one job, okay? Which is to make you want to read the next line. A pay-per-click ad has one job, which is to make the right people click the ad to find out what's next, right? Every sentence in your copy has one job which is to get them to keep reading the next sentence after that. Okay? And it goes on and on and on. If they're the right people. Right? Because we're not in a funnel kind of world now. We don't want to invite everybody around. We want the right people. So give the right people the reason to do the next thing. <clears throat> so, we've got your attention. You've clicked on the ad or you've opened the letter, whatever it may be. What happens next? Now what we need to do is walk the path. So I've gone up to you on the path and I've said, hey, did you know that a billion dollar US study has revealed how men over 40 can, whatever it is, regain the vitality of their golden years or whatever it was, right? It's like, whoa, really? Yeah, hey, walk with me, let's, let's do this. It's like, yeah, apparently, blah, blah, blah. And the conversation starts. And before you know it, you've gone, Wow, I need to get me some of that. Okay, let's walk in the path. That's all we're doing. So to do that, we want to use the Awareness Ladder 2, version 2, the detailed version. You can get that at benhunt.com slash AL2. And we'll have a quick look here. <clears throat> There's the link again. Goes across different steps. These are the specific actions that you should plan for even if you look at it and go, that is not applicable to my campaign for these reasons, fine. That's fine. I'm happy if you can, if you can say that. And that's true. That's great. Um, <clears throat> but for most of us, I, we should at least consider how we can deliver on each of these things. Okay, So that you know that you've covered all the bases. That's all I want you to do. So in the rest of this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of those ones from step zero, step one, which really, you know, relate to getting someone's attention. Um, so leading up to the point where you're going to introduce your solution. Okay. And then in the next video, we'll go through the rest of them. All right. So that when by the end of that, you've got a complete marketing campaign. This, this is all you need to do, people. That's, this is it. Right. You've got to, you know what you want to do. You know who you're going to do it with. You've got your circuit. And now your plan, get all these steps in place, and then you can go to market with extreme confidence. So let's work through some of those first steps. Okay, first one, identify who this applies to. Why is this important? Because <clears throat> if it doesn't apply to me, why should I care? If you don't know who this applies to, how can you get past their so what filter, right? It's, it's just absolute common sense, right? So, you know, it's, is it men over 40? Is it women who want to lose weight but, you know, can't stop snacking? Identify who it relates to. Simple thing, Every, everybody has the same favorite subject, me. Me is everyone's favorite subject. In fact, me is pretty much the, the only thing that people care about. There's a theory that every action that anybody takes 
is for one reason, which is to um, increase their personal satisfaction. Whether that may be eating an entire packet of giant cookies, right? Even if it is, um, you know, being miserable and sitting and listening to miserable music, um, even if it is altruism, or, you know, doing something for somebody else or going the extra mile for your kids or whatever, anything that we do is there because it makes us feel better or we think it's going to make us feel better, right? So any message that you put out there, it's got to be relevant to this particular person. We've already said relevance is one of the, the important factors. Okay, second thing, you need to emphasize the problem. Why do we need to emphasize the problem? Because it's got to be significant enough to overcome everyone's natural inertia, right? We've all got limited time. We've all got enough to do. We all spend some of the time tired or fed up or bored or distracted or whatever. And we just can't, you know, we can't, we can't do it. We can't respond to everything that's out there. We just haven't got the energy, the money, the time, etc. Right? So there's this natural inertia all the time. We've got to, as marketers, we've got to overcome that inertia because we've got to get people to take action. Right? So, you know, a, a problem is only going to result in action when the problem is important or significant or impactful enough to be worth doing something about. It's just absolute common sense, total logic. So what are the impacts of the problem? This is the, the way to think your way into that. Okay. What are the impacts of the problem to me right now? What are the impacts of the problem, not only now, but in the future, if I don't do anything about it? What are the impacts of the problem, not just to me, but to other people around me, All right? So, you know, a, a lot of kind of personal care stuff. I said, you know, are people talking about you behind your back? Are they offended by the smell, you know, when you walk into the room? I said, oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, it's not really a problem to me, but now you mention it. You know, do people recoil when I open my mouth? I don't know. And what about the bigger picture? What about the world? What about the world that you're going to leave for future generations? Yeah. What about, you know, the what, what's most important to you in your life for the person that you choose to be? Right. All of these things can be relevant to the problem. Now, it's our job not to, you know, not, not to big up a problem that isn't there or to try and create a problem that isn't there. Um, but to, you know, where there is a real problem and say, well, look, this is a problem, right? you got pain in that left knee. How long have you had that pain? Are you happy living with that pain? Right? Do you want to be living with that pain in 5, 10, 15 years' time? What is that left knee pain preventing you from doing? What will it be preventing you from doing? You know, is that going to stop you playing football with your grandchildren? Right? So, you know, we've just taken one example. Um, <clears throat> and it's fair. It's appropriate, it's right to say, let's tell the truth about the real impact of this problem, right? Next step. So remember, we're working through the steps. So we've identified the problem. We've looked at the impact of the problem. We've said who it applies to. Um, acknowledge that the solutions exist. And this is important. It, it's tempting not to it, kind of skip over this, but we shouldn't. Because acknowledging that there are other solutions out there is an important element in establishing credibility. Because if you, if if your marketing ignores the fact that the consumer or prospect has a choice and ignores the fact that there are other options out there, then it you're risking giving the message to this individual that you know, you think they're dumb in some way, right? Um, or they may be thinking, yeah, but we've already got this. And you haven't addressed this. You haven't addressed your competition. You can't address that competition without acknowledging that the competition exists. 
right? So acknowledging that there are other solutions actually gives you the context for establishing where your solution fits relative to that, okay? <clears throat> and you should always assume that, you know, like we've said, that everybody that you're speaking to, we are assuming that they are in your market, that they are undecided and they are ready and willing at some point to buy if you can persuade them and give them every reason, okay? You should also assume that everybody who knows that solutions exist, right, we're at step two, um, doesn't have a preferred solution that they've already decided to buy, okay? It's just all part and parcel of the same thing. So you've got to acknowledge that solutions exist so that you can position your solution relative to all that other stuff. And it's the defense against, yeah, but this. The reasons why and the root causes. So, there are other solutions out there. There are solutions to your knee pain, right, Mrs. Prospect. Um, but you don't want to take drugs for the rest of your life just to help manage that pain, okay? Um, what's causing your knee pain? Why hasn't it gone away, okay? Um, so the root causes is, is there's a reason why none of the other solutions have yet addressed your problem, right? There's a missing piece. There's a missing piece in what you have been told about this, right? And, you know, all of that plays directly to here is the things that the doctors don't want you to know. Here are the things that the whoever don't want you to know, okay? There's a missing piece. There's something that you don't know, and it's not your fault that you don't know it, right? But there's a reason why those drugs have not been helping your knee pain. There's a reason why those exercises haven't given you the flat belly, right? There's a reason why these pills that you've been taking or whatever, 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 right? There's a reason why you are still at the place you're at. And what one aspect of that could be that there's a fundamental flaw or failure in the other solutions. There's something that all these options that you may have tried, these diets that you may have tried, these products that you may have tried, haven't delivered what you really need, okay? This is why. And I, I developed this into something I call the A to B technique. And there's a whole other video on this, um, which you can find. And the A to B technique says, you're at point A, we all know you want to be at point B. You know you want to be at point B, where, for example, you don't worry about money, okay? Or you're living life pain-free, or whatever it may be. Okay. There's a reason why you can't just make that step from where you are now into that place. And it's not your fault. Okay? Because you don't you never want to make your prospects uh, out to be stupid or lazy or whatever, right? It's just always a bad idea. You don't want to insult your prospects. Right? There's a reason why you can't just go from here to there, right? And there's something missing in that which is what we are going to provide, right? That's the simple aspect of A to B method. So what's preventing you from getting there? You just need the missing piece. And this is the missing piece, and this is why. And all of that, remember, is in the context of these are the other options that haven't worked for you. This is why they haven't worked for you. Okay, so you've got to address the causes of the problem. Next is to look at the unrealized possibility, right? So this is, you can be, you, you can be at step, at, uh, at point B, right? You don't have to stay at here. Let's think about point B. Let's look at point B. So you want to get them to start to visualize what life could be like, right? And this is powerful. You want to make the, the step to that feel real and tangible and credible and within your reach, okay? And you could use language like, you know, don't you owe it to yourself, but that kind, that kind of thought, right? It's like, why, 
Why put up with this? So that's when you get ads saying, you know, stop, blah, 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 and, you know, realize this, okay? Now going along with that, hand in hand really, is building their self-belief, the, the belief that they can do it. So the words you can, I think, are incredibly powerful, right? So you want to stress that this is a real, it's, it's not only real and credible, but it's achievable, that you can do it, and all it takes is this. And social proof is a great example of doing that, actually, actually proving that other people, normal people like you and me, have been able to do this thing. It's as simple as, all right? And you can see these words that you've seen so many times coming up in marketing copy coming out. And then we've touched on this already, you know, thinking about point B, really get them to try and visualize the outcome in their life, if you can do it. The reason why that's so important is that visualization, our, our minds are so powerful that if you can visualize, if you can imagine the feeling, the sensation, the, the feeling of pride, the smell of the leather, whatever it may be, right? You experience um, emotionally a similar experience to if it was actually real. And when you do that, because it's an emotional response, emotions work on a far deeper level than cognition. And it's often said that people make a decision to buy emotionally and then justify it with logic. I don't know if that's true in every case, but it's, um, it's pretty much a truism in advertising and marketing. So getting somebody to imagine what that feels like really stimulates the emotion. So I'm reminded of the, the classic, I think John Cable's ad, you know, they laughed when I sat down, when he sat down at the piano, but when he started to play, um, straight, you're there in the story. You're picturing people going, you know, the laughter stopping, they go, wow, right? Absolutely genius ad. Get them to visualize the outcome in their life and they feel like they've had a taste of it and they want that taste again. There's a, an old trick that pet shops would always try and do. So if a you know, parent and child comes in to say, can we look at the puppy? And you have to get the child to hold the puppy. If you can get the person on the other side of the counter to hold the puppy and the puppy looks at them with those puppy eyes and licks their face, right? They don't want to hand the puppy back because puppies are designed to be lov lovable and you would be rejecting it by giving it back. So if you can get somebody to start to feel like this is my puppy, I feel the love from the puppy, I feel the love towards the puppy, you've done your job, right? Because they don't, don't want to lose that emotion. So that's what visualization does. It gives them the experience and the dopamine effect of that thing they really want in their life that you've told them is within arm's reach, okay? So I wanna show you an ad. I found this today. This was posted on Facebook by my friend Patrick Powers. And I want to look at this with the context of those four things, okay? In fact, the uh, so is it relevant, appealing, credible, appropriate? And let's look at these first steps that you need to do when you um, reach out to somebody and this is you know, maybe the first thing that people have seen to do with whatever it is that Patrick is selling okay so these are the things that we want to do we want to identify who it applies to emphasize the problem and knowledge solutions exist reasons why unrealized possibility build self-belief and visualize the outcome okay it's finally here Tomorrow, we launch one of the world's most powerful health and detox programs in the UK. Inbox me for more info. So he's getting the call to action right there, okay, in the, the very first two lines. I've been fat for most of my grown life and nothing really works long term. The first thing that works for me was juicing. Now, so identify who it applies to. People are unhappy with their fatness weight, okay? Um... I've been fat for most of my life and nothing really worked. And then acknowledging solutions exist, juicing. Hey, and he's even saying juicing worked. 
the first thing that worked for me was juicing, right? So he's not saying nothing really worked at all. Juicing worked. But after two sizes, it stopped working, and drinking green sludge every day gets really boring. Hmm. Right? So there's a kind of a reason, reason why. So he's positioning, he's already saying solutions exist, but there's nothing that's ideal. Because this one works temporarily, and it has the downside that you're drinking green sludge every day. Right? It gets really boring, especially when it doesn't work. It was only when I got on this program that my hunger got balanced. Right? So that's another, that's a little landmine again for the alternative solutions. And I got consistent results. Right? So it's very cleverly saying, yeah, these other things are kind of great. It, in a way, they, they've each got their own kind of strengths and weaknesses, but this thing works because, and I didn't experience hunger and I wasn't drinking green sludge. And it worked consistently, and it, it actually has. <laughs> it tasted amazing, and most importantly, it worked. Now we're going to transform health in the UK and Europe. Want to take part in a mission to free the world of physical and financial pain? Get in touch. Okay. So, identify who it applies to. Emphasize the problem. He hasn't done that in, in huge detail, but you know he's, he's shown you as well great before and after pictures, which I can verify is him. Um, the the problem doesn't really need to is this a very common problem and people are quite aware of it so it doesn't maybe need to be emphasized too much acknowledging solutions exist he's done a great job of that um, the reasons why things haven't worked well he's touched on multiple reasons why right just enough to you know create doubt and create those cracks that uh, he can you know uh, fill with his solution the unrealized possibility, wow, so you know, so you can lose this much weight and enjoy what you're eating, and it works consistently. Okay, build self belief, yes, and he's got the social proof of the before and after picture. Visualize the outcome, he hasn't done that in this particular ad, but you don't have to do absolutely everything in every particular case because um, people can pretty much go there on their own to some degree. And so I think he's got a huge amount of value in just a few lines with one particular picture. So I think that's a fantastic example of the first kind of, you know, ad, the first communication that can reach out to a person. Really good job. So let's quickly summarize what we've, what we've talked about. You need to get your prospect's attention when you meet them on the road, and you need to do that in an effective manner that is appropriate to their context and the mode that they're in and their level of awareness. Then all you need is a plan of how you're gonna address each of those steps on the awareness ladder as efficiently as possible. And that's all we need to cover today. Um, in the next video, we're gonna look at the remaining steps of how you're gonna get from that point of creating the, the space to introduce your solution right up through to sale and beyond for a consistent business. Thank you.